Hey class, I'm Mr. Thornton, and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, blood. This topic was suggested by Henry William Smith. Thanks, Henry. If there's a topic you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. The first thing to be aware of when we're thinking about blood is that it's a tissue. This may seem a little bit unusual when we think about other tissues in the body, such as muscle or bone. But remember the definition of a tissue is a load of similar cells all working together to do the same job. And blood fits that definition. Blood is made of four key components. Firstly, there is plasma. This is a fluid which is running through our circulatory system which contains everything else. The other three things are shown here. This is a scanning electron microscope image of actual examples of the three other things which are in our blood. You see a red blood cell. This is the one which looks kind of like a donut where the hole hasn't gone all the way through. And then this small spiky thing is a platelet. This is a little bit unusual. Generally speaking, they tend to be more plate shaped. They tend to be sort of more flat disks, hence the name platelet. Um, but I am assured this is genuinely a platelet. And then finally, we have a white blood cell, this one that's all kind of lumpy at the end. Those are the four key components of blood. So let's run through what each of them do in turn, starting with the plasma. The plasma is mainly water. It's got a few other things dissolved in it though, and its job is to carry those dissolved substances around the body. One of the key ones is that it carries carbon dioxide. So that'll be carbon dioxide which has been produced through respiration in the muscle tissues and all the other tissues of the body where cells are respiring. And that dissolves back into that water in the plasma and it's carried back towards the lungs and then it can diffuse back out into the lungs and we can exhale it. It also carries dissolved nutrients, dissolved substances, which we've got from digestion. As we digest food, that food, once it's broken down, things like glucose and amino acids, they all pass into the bloodstream and into the plasma, and they're carried around to the various places that need them. The final thing which the blood is carrying in the plasma is urea, which has been produced by the liver and is being passed to the kidneys so that we can then excrete it. So three things which are carried in the plasma, remember it's just that watery fluid, and the three things which it's carrying are carbon dioxide, substances from digestion, and urea from the liver heading towards the kidneys. Next, red blood cells. And these are unusual cells because they don't actually contain a nucleus. That's because they've just got one job, and that is to carry oxygen around the body. They contain a substance called hemoglobin, which gives them their distinctive red colour and gives your blood its distinctive red colour. And as they get towards the lungs, that hemoglobin combines with oxygen, which is diffused into the bloodstream, to form oxyhemoglobin. That oxyhemoglobin is then carried around the circulatory system to the various organs which need it, muscles and your brain, all the different organs like that. And as those organs use it, they separate out the oxygen from the haemoglobin. And so the oxyhemoglobin becomes oxygen and haemoglobin again. That haemoglobin is then carried back by the red blood cells towards uh, the lungs to get more oxygen. And of course, the oxygen which has been separated out by those organs is then used for respiration. Platelets are not cells at all. They're fragments of cells. They're normally the remains of dead cells which have broken down. And all they do is help clot wounds. They form a blood clot. When you've got a scab, it's mainly made of things like platelets. And they're there to help block any wounds. This can, of course, become a problem in some cases if you get a blood clot taking place inside a vein because someone's been sitting still for a very long period of time. Then that can cause all sorts of problems like deep vein thrombosis. But all that you really need to know about those platelets is that they cause blood clots and they're not full cells, they're just parts of cells. Finally, white blood cells. I'll discuss their role in more detail when I cover the immune system. For now, all you need to be aware of is that they are part of the immune system and they help fight infections from microorganisms. Finally, I just want to quickly dispel a myth, and that is the idea that deoxygenated blood is blue. It's not. It's often represented that way on diagrams just to make it easier to track which bits are the oxygenated blood and which bits are the deoxygenated blood. And when I talk about the circulatory system, you'll see an example of these diagrams. But really, deoxygenated blood is this colour. This is blood from blood donors which has been taken from a vein 
And you can see that although it's darker than we'd expect blood to be, it's not actually blue at all. It's a darker red, a slightly darker red, but it's certainly not blue. So next time someone tells you that deoxygenated blood is blue, you'll be able to correct them. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the SNAP quiz. The link is right here, and it'll also be in the description, along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.